Hi, Kayla. Um, you talked a lot about it during the season, just about the need of connectiveness and having each other's back. It kind of came together after the first quarter, especially on the defensive end on Sunday. What do you think was the key to that? And, and how do you build on that? I mean, it was just uh, constant toughness. You know, we know that it's not going to be perfect. Adding lay, few came this week. You know, not having a full training camp. We know that it's going to take time, you know, but the effort and the concentration and the focus has to be there all the time. And I think it was just that we decided that we were going to compete and battle. I mean, I think that was the best team in the league. I think they are right now. Um, and we knew that we were going to you know, have to battle each and every possession. And I think that we just kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting. And then everything else kind of fell into place because it wasn't perfect by any means um, on offense, especially. Um, but the defense, the effort and just us being aware and having each other's backs, that was the difference in those last three quarters. You know, we, we really trusted just to, to be there for each other, you know, whether it was messed up or not, um, just being there, having each other's backs and, and getting it done. Yeah, Kayla, you probably want to be connected to a certain degree, but I'm, I'm sure it takes time to get there. That'll probably happen like mid season, but can effort make up for a lot of that? You know, like can enough effort make up for maybe like a lack of connectivity as you, as you kind of work to figure that out during this year? Oh, 100%. You know, I think it's just the, the effort, the concentration on the details, you know, KYP, we say, know your personnel, knowing, the, knowing what they're trying to do and, and being aware of that and having a certain focus about us. Because um, like I said, it's not going to be perfect. No game is perfect. I mean, these are great players. They're going to make great, great uh, plays. They're going to make great shots. Um, but, you know, if we're do constantly doing the right things and we're trusting in the right things and trusting each other, um, I think that's why you saw at the end, we were still, we were still locked in. We were down eight with, with one minute, and eight seconds, I think. Um, to be able to come back from that, you know, it takes a lot of mental toughness. So I was really proud of how we just stayed together because, you know, once it does come together on the offensive end and we get more comfortable with each other, um, relying on that effort and that concentration and that toughness is what's going to win us games. Doug Feinberg, go ahead. Hey, K hey, Mac. Hey, Doug. I I'm curious. You you were so open about your journey with mental health last fall, mm -hmm. and we're just coming off Mental Health Month in May, which I mean every month is Mental Health Month. Um, but it was a focus last month. I'm guessing you're aware of what's going on in the French Open with Naomi Osaka pulling out because of mental health reasons. A, I'm curious how your mental health is right now, and B, just your thoughts on how much you're aware of what happened with her and, and just as athletes, what maybe could be done. Coach Reeve actually had a really good point that maybe the league could do something. We're saying if someone needs a week off or whatever to not do media because of mental, a mental break, that'd be great, no questions asked. So just your thoughts on all that's going on from this situation. Yeah, I mean, uh, mental health is, is something that as athletes, Sometimes our egos can get in the way of that, you know, but I think that um, speaking about it and making the decision for us is part of us being human. I think sometimes as athletes, we focus on being an athlete all the time. Like, okay, I got practice. I got this, I have this, you know, and then you have the media and you want to say the right things and you want to, sometimes it takes off like of what really matters, you know, and that's the game and that's having fun. And that's why we picked up the ball in the first place or picked up the, the racket in the first place, you know? So in the case of Naomi Osaka, I think that that choice for her is her deciding that not only is she more important, but the game is more important, you know, because she knows that, that unless she takes a step off, a step away from all the stuff that she probably had to hear about her not deciding to talk to media in the first place, to remember why she plays the game in the first place, you know, she's a human first, she's a person first, she has a mom, a dad, you know, a family, you know, like all those things matter before we even get on the court or, you know, go the French Open, like there's all those eyes on her constantly. So for her to make that decision to choose her, she should never get backlash for that, you know, because at the end of the day, if she's not performing to the highest expectation of who she is, Naomi Osaka, then everybody's gonna be asking why. But she shouldn't have to explain herself if she wants to put herself first, you know? And I think that goes back to the mental health aspect is, you know, last year I didn't go overseas because after 2019 season, I felt like I needed a break from basketball. There was something that was like a block, you know? And obviously I don't want to, that's the way I make money. You know, that's how I provide for myself, provide for my family. But I knew I wasn't going to be myself if I went to go do that. And obviously, it's not the French Open. It's way different. But still, making that decision to step away something that you love, right? Because we've been doing this since we were little. It's hard. And you know you're going to get backlash from it. But choosing yourself and choosing your mental health is probably the strongest thing that she could do right now. Um, you know, going in and maybe even if she did great and even if she won, how she would be feeling during it, you know, you don't want to. The, the aftermath of that is sometimes harder to deal with than, you know, not performing at all. So um, 
super thankful for her and, and her journey and sharing her journey because as an athlete that deals with mental health issues, um, you know, choosing yourself sometimes can be the hardest thing, so. Cody, go ahead. In, in the last couple of years, have you seen resources change uh, in, from the league or, for sure. or, or wherever from, for helping you deal with that? Yeah, and I think that, you know, more athletes have been coming out and talking about it too. I think just in the basketball realm, DeMar DeRozan, Kevin Love, sharing their stories, Liz Cambage, former teammate of mine, sharing their stories. Um, it gives you the confidence to want to be able to share yours. Last year, I shared mine. But the, you know, the, the reciprocation that you get from that and the gratification that you get from that, because you're basically taking your control back. So mental health, you know, obviously, is like you feel like you're out of control. You feel like you don't have control over your emotions, things like that. So taking that control back is such a big thing as an athlete, as a person, as a human. Um, and, you know, you've obviously seen a lot more, at least on WNBA, I can't speak for other sports, but for us, we have a sports psych, someone that we can talk to. Um, you know, it's more of an open conversation, even within the group, even within the coaches, you know, having that open communication has helped me. You know, I had it in Vegas uh, and I've also been able to have it here in Minnesota. So I think that the conversation is starting to become more, you know, everybody's doing a little bit more, but, you know, we still have a long way to go because there's still so many people who aren't ready to share their stories yet. And we have to give them that space to do that. Shifting to a different subject. Okay. Um, <laughs> Not something so serious. Yeah. Uh, this season, there's been a couple of long breaks. You're in a four day break now. You had an eight day break last week. Is, is it hard to get in a rhythm? I mean, mm -hmm. Cheryl said she didn't really have the best training camp that she wanted to. So she yeah. likes having these breaks. Right. But as a player, like you win the other night, I'm sure you want to get another win For sure. a couple days later. I mean, there's benefits to it, obviously, because for us, you know, we're still putting the pieces together. Fee, I came and then Fee came and now Lay's here. You know, we had a little bit of injuries and stuff like that. So for us, it's great. I think for other teams, it sucks because now they're they're loaded up right now and they're playing every other day. And now they don't really have that practice time. And I think the beginning of the season to have this time has been beneficial for us, especially beneficial for me. I know Cheryl loves it. She's like geeked every time we come into the gym. But, uh, you know, obviously you want to play. But I think for us as a team, it has been really beneficial just for us to get to know each other. A lot of new faces, even Ace, you know, it's been a while since I played with her. Getting to know Sil, getting to know Crystal, uh, that helps just being in the gym and being able to talk through things. Cause it's not necessarily, you can't necessarily do that in the game all the time. You're kind of just going out there and playing. So um, having this time has been good for me. Kent, did you have a follow-up question? A real quick one. Um... You played against Sill for years, um, and I'm sure you appreciated what she what, what she brought to the court. I know a lot's been talked about about her as a leader and off the court stuff, but just on the court, having played with her now for five games, what surprises you about her game? Man, um, I mean, she's been so she's been so dominant for so long. Um, she's breaking records every game. So, um, you know, I think it's uh, there's so many great things about Sill. Her patience, though, I think is the biggest thing. Um, obviously, she has a lot of new faces surrounding her, and she's been with this franchise for a while now. She's seen championships and stuff like that. And so her patience and her acceptance of who's around her and the new, you know, always communicating, no matter if things are good, if we're up 10, down 10, she's always, like, really patient and, and with us and always talking and things like that. And I think as, like, a, a vet-ish, vet, yeah, I guess you would call me vet now, um, seeing how she's just constantly responding in the right ways has really helped me kind of find my way. Um, but also, you know, a lot of our younger players, she allows them to kind of make those mistakes and get to the next play. And, you know, we all have so much respect for sales. So when she's the one saying like, get to the next play, and get to the next play, that's the bar, you know, she's setting that bar. Um, but she also expects a lot out of us. So um, having her is always a security blanket for us, you know, because we know she's always going to have our back and, and do what she does. So I've had a great time playing with her instead of against her. I spent too many times on the other side. Um, but, you know, I've known so from USA and things like that. She's such a she's such a great person on top of what she provides for us on the court. So um, just been able to learn from her and uh, be on her team, get those screens, throw those passes. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, right, you know, well, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, just, you know, she, she's off to one, and statistically, she's off to one of her best starts. Mm -hmm. It's certainly in about five years, maybe one of the best starts of her career. Does, the fact, does that surprise you that somebody at age 35 can can still be bringing it every night like that? Not still. Uh, she's a worker. She's always locked in every practice, every game, every shoot around. Um, you can tell why she's gotten to the place that she's gotten just by how she prepares herself mentally and physically and how good of a teammate she is. Uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about Syl, but 
you know, her presence, uh, you know, she, she expects a lot out of herself first. And I think that sometimes, you know, we, we take these types of players for granted, players that are able to consistently do what they do. Um, but still, being off to the best start, one of the best starts, it doesn't surprise me at all. She's still just as dominant, I think, as she has been in years past. So, like I said, happy to be on the other side of it. <laughs> All right, well, the last Jace. Jace, go ahead. Hey, Kayla. Obviously, this team wants to do a lot more, wants to win a lot of games this year. But getting that first one, uh, I'm guessing there was kind of a weight building. How different does practice feel today coming off a win? I mean, great. There's obviously a great energy. We know we still have a long way to go, but we were proud of our effort, uh, proud of our resilience, uh, especially in front of our home crowd. I think that's such a big thing in this league is to win your home games. Um, so I was really – I mean, everybody, it's, it's just a great environment, period. You know, it's, it's been a great environment even when we lose because we know that we have to stay connected in order to get over the hump. But, you know, doing it together and doing it the way that we did um, as a team, you know, it's not a one-man show here. We know that. But doing it as a team is something that uh, we really relied on. And I think that um, you're going to see that continue to grow as the games go on.